Yeah, that's the secret to a well-composed shot. You're gonna wanna point the camera directly at the sun and then wait until a semi drives past. Howdy folks, welcome back. Some of you will no doubt remember this rig. It's a 1995 Ford E350 cabin chassis truck with a 7.3 power stroke diesel engine. It was originally an ambulance and they added a flatbed and made it into kind of a, an oversized pickup truck. We did a series of videos on this truck about a year ago, a year and some change now. It had been sitting for a few years and we replaced the injector driver module, got it running. We also did some other wiring repairs. I replaced the under, under valve cover wiring harnesses for the injectors. And then we had a bunch of issues with the vehicle speed sensor. So the speedometer needle was bouncing all over. And then more importantly, the transmission would just shift erratically. And we tracked it down to a rusty tone ring inside the rear axle. Actually replaced that tone ring. Did some other repairs. I think we fixed some heater hoses and some AC lines and... Yeah, I don't remember what else. Anyway, it's back. And... The customer complaint this time is that it won't start. Again, well it starts, but it's kind of hard to start. I think it's got a bad glow plug relay. So we're gonna do a little testing on that. Pretty common problem with these power strokes. I think I even have another video about, about testing and replacing one. And then he wants to install a trailer brake controller. So I'll show you guys how we do that. The glow plug relay is back, kind of back here. And it's got this giant alternator. I guess because it was an ambulance. It's like a 200 amp alternator. Okay, we'll just leave that there. Don't worry, I've got plenty of ratchets. It's too bad I don't have some sort of an electric or pneumatically powered ratchet that could expedite this process. We should look into that, I guess. If I remember right, the bolts won't come out anyway. So. Oh, that's about all we're gonna get. All right, folks, we're as in as we're gonna get. We should have power over here all the time. Helps if you hook up the test light. There it is. Okay, so we got power on that side. Nothing on that side. Let me turn the key on. And we have nothing. Good, so the, the glow plug relay most likely is dead. Let's see, we should have power over here somewhere. There it is. So we got power on one side of the control. No power on the other side of the control. Let's flip this over to the positive. There it is. So we've got a ground and a positive on the control side and nothing going through the relay. So that's it, pretty simple, needs a relay. Like I said, it's a really common problem on these. I don't know, did you guys hear that? You kind of heard that kind of weak springy sound? That was the relay turning off. There it is, folks. I did not record removing it. All you would have seen is about six minutes of the back of my arm. We have arrived in Louisville, Kentucky at the Utility Expo. We're gonna try vlogging. 
Just what everybody wanted. We've already failed this yeah, block. We're not quite sure what to expect. I think there's people over there we're supposed to rendezvous with. Yep. I saw them. One of us is looking smashing. Uh, the other one, not so much. I want to know where my beer is or where my coffee is. Well, it's 8.30 in the morning, so. If I was in Wisconsin, I would have a beer already. Just saying. True enough. Really I think I brought my Sherpa. Who's that guy? The big guys in Jersey or sure. up, or up you guys know him. It's going to be quite a dog and pony show, I think. We're going to stay away from that guy. That's bad news right there. You get like the nice walking How shower. Too. Look who showed up. I wasn't sure what to expect. I think we're going to have a pretty good turnout. What do you got there? All right, let's try a quick bench test. Okay. That's it. We've got clicky clicky, but no worky worky. All right, let's try out the new one. See if it's any good. Yeah. There we go. Uh, there we go. It does work. Kind of dim. What's going on here? Anyway, that's all we needed to see. It's working. The glow plug relay stays on for, I don't know, it's like. 90 seconds or something. Put the alternator back together and move on to the next project. What do you think, lady? Well, I made a costume change because YouTubers wanted to see me in the merch. So I'm in merch. Yeah, but nobody can buy that merch. It's terrible advertising. Not my fault. This is my favorite shirt, so I'm wearing it. All right. We have survived the meet and greet. We did. We're going to go into that building. I don't know why, but I want one of those. Fat truck. I think you need one of those. All right, some time has passed. It's a little bit cooler this morning. Let's see if this hot rod will fire up. Normally you can tell the glow plugs are working just based on the voltmeter. Well, that's interesting. This thing is dead as a doornail. What the flip is going on out here? Uh, yeah. That might help. There we go. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's reset this. And we'll go do something else for another 30 minutes and uh, perhaps when we come back this will actually work. Find the cricket pup. It's over here somewhere. Alright, fifth time's a charm. It's not looking good. I got a bad connection somewhere. It's not even trying. If only there was a mechanic here could diagnose this for me. I had the battery cables loose, I think, didn't I? When we pulled the glow plug relay out, I can't remember, it's been so long now. <sighs> Nothing. And there's the rain. Is the battery charger waterproof? Probably not. 
All right, folks, we're about to enter the secret lair. I think we might need to do some foundation repairs. I might have got too close to the skid steer buckle. We won't mention names. Yep. yep. There's, that's what we came to see right there. Yes. That's the hot. There's certainly nothing behind me that anyone would be interested in. <laughs> Now, Mike, what I haven't told you, this is actually, this has all been an elaborate scheme. I am a secret investigator from the Department of Pinion Bearing Mounting. Oh, God, here we go. You talking about the... Uh... We're here to do a spot check. What do you think there, Inspector? That's well... A, no, keep in mind, that's 3 8 wall tubing. Well, here's the deal. We don't do any kind of calculations. We just go off of popular opinion. <laughs> popular and, opinion uh, is that will never last. You no, know, it's... it's not a chance. No, it's Not basically an accident waiting to happen yes, right there. Yes, that, 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 that thing's going to fly out of there the first time it goes down the road. Yep, that's it's too bad. So this is Lieutenant Dan. This is Dirt Perfect's dump truck project. It's a six-wheel drive uh, international Paystar chassis, former military truck. And he is converting it to an on-road slash off-road dump truck. It's got a brand new Cristeel bed. Got his Dirt Perfect custom square exhaust. Oh, this thing is pretty sweet. Just look at all the fabrication that they've done to it. This thing is awesome, Mike. It looks it looks cool in the videos, but that's nothing compared to what it is in person. <laughs> it's gonna be the only one of its kind, that's for sure. That's the only one I like to be different, Wes. Yes, sir. So Mike built this shop and he installed this overhead crane. It's a very cool feature. I wish I had that in my shop. Mike's got an encouraging face on the computer there. I do. We gotta find something better than that. Something better than that. We got the super stick. Doing a little bit of pond dredging here. The pups don't seem to be very impressed, though. I hear you. It's as ridiculous as it looks, but it works. This is Mike's little barn fine Jeep. It's getting her all fixed up. Got some new shoes on it. Got this. Pretty cool patina, but it it seems pretty solid. That's just cosmetic. Wonder if I can fit. What do you think, pup? Can I fit in this thing? Mike's pretty tall. He fits in. Let's find out. It's a little tight. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's doable. Not ideal, is it, pup? Thinking those GIs were, on average, a little smaller than me. This thing is cool. I'd love to have one of these. It's all moved out of the way. Oh, like the there crank, was any question. The crank pulley just. That's fine. It'll self-correct. Yeah. Belt. I'm surprised it doesn't have a Diesel Creek belt screw as loose as that thing is. <laughs> oh, it's starting to chirp because I'm here. It's charging now. It's charging now. It's sending out those vibes. Now, uh, it runs good. Let's well, talk about second gear. Told me. That's what everybody on the internet says. You don't need second gear. I mean, it's got three whole gears, man. Exactly. And high and lows. And high and low. That's I got right. five good ones yet. <laughs> what a sweetheart. Of course, we got the real pride and joy here. Mrs. Dirt Perfect's Vanper. Van Vanper? Yep. I must be camera shy. You getting wet out there, pup? I know you love it. The battery setup's pretty hilarious on these diesel powered van chassis. It's got a single group 65 on the left side, just like the gas engine. And on the right side, they jam in this goofy Group 50 battery. It's like a super narrow case. Anyway, this one's got a, a sticker that says 618. I tested it. 
it's marginal to good. I think that one's probably fine. It just needs to be charged up. But this guy over here, I think it's that's going to be our problem. So it's not even showing 12 volts just sitting here. Pretty sure it's just going to fall on his face. Yeah, it's got nothing. So that battery is shot. All right, the customer tells me that this battery is at least 11 years old. So it's going to be replaced if we can get it out of here. You guys got to watch me and my tendency to exaggerate for dramatic effect. It's only 10 years old. Also, this is only a 650 cold cranking amp battery. Our new one is an 850. All right, one last time. See if we can redeem ourselves. That's more like it. Good. Now we can finally move on to installing the brake controller. Oh, you weren't even recording? You're the worst. All right, folks, we have survived the meet and greet, and we have arrived in Derby, Indiana at camp? Question mark? It's all, everyone just says camp. Everyone just says camp. Some kind of a hideout for Dirt Perfect, I guess. So go ahead and start it up. Yeah. Wait, are you sure? I get in trouble for turning yeah. ignitions. No, yeah. no, go ahead. Okay. Here you go. You're not listening to me, you're listening to Neil, remember? That's being a little judgy. Calling it like I see it. Alright. Hey, better her better him teaching her than us. Are we safely out of range? Oh yeah, yeah we're out right of reach. Swing, swing radius. There you go. No pressure, that sound just means you're screwing up. There you go, perfect. Oh, I mean, wait, I need to go. There you go, you got it. Pull it up. Are you sure you want to be here? Yeah, I'm going to jump down. Neil, how's your life insurance policy? Perfect. Well, if you're gonna screw one up, the dirt perfect one's the best one. I was like, I'm doing that. There you go. No, do it. Stress Can test. I just turn it off? Yeah. Stress test complete. Did it! I got I quit. I got up. I tried. I did three. I learned something new. I'm done. <laughs> All right, lady. Good job. <laughs> well, I bench tested this brake controller. Well, at least I put power to it and. The lights come on, so it's doing something. I don't know if it works works correctly or not. We're gonna have to probably test it on an actual trailer to find that out. Anyway, to get this hooked up, I just bought this pre-made pigtail. This is standard for Fords. 
And if you have a newer brake controller, this should plug right into it. But on this old one, if there was a plug, it's gone now. It was hardwired in, so we're just going to have to chop this and splice this together. And then this end will plug into the harness that's underneath the dash. That'll work. I didn't get my stagger quite right, but I wanted to leave as much wire as I could. We've got to reach quite a ways. Bust open a brand new roll of the good stuff. Scotch Super 33. saved it. Beautiful. Well, I forgot I was going to explain this a little bit. I made a video, I think about a year ago, where I installed a trailer hitch and some wiring and a brake controller in a little Chevy Colorado pickup truck. And the concept seemed to be totally foreign to people who are outside of North America. For most applications, we use these electronic brake controllers, and magnetic electronic brakes. So the way it works, you have regular drum brake shoes, just like you're used to, but instead of having a wheel cylinder that expands them, you have a cam, and the cam is attached to a lever with an electromagnet on it. And this electromagnet is controlled by the electronic brake controller, and the more current you send to this magnet, the tighter it grips the inside of the brake drum. It's actually gripping the flat face on the back side of the drum. And the more it grips, the more it pulls the lever, the more it pulls the cam, the more it spreads the brake shoes. And usually, well, I think all the states require now that you have a device called a breakaway. So the brake controller controls the magnet under normal circumstances, but if the trailer were to become disconnected, there's actually a breakaway on the front that has a battery, and that battery will send power to the magnet, and the idea is that it would stop, would apply the brakes on the trailer if it ever became separated from the towing vehicle. It actually works pretty well. It's, like I said, the standard system that we use here in North America, and actually, you know, most of the the vehicle manufacturers figured out probably 25 or 30 years ago that people wanted to tow trailers, especially with trucks. So most trucks have a pretty straightforward provision for installing a brake controller. And then most of your larger trucks, like three quarter ton trucks and larger, starting about 20 years ago, they, they actually come with brake controllers built in. And that's actually way better than these, these cheapo aftermarket ones that you can buy because these things have a lot of problems. So this is a solid state brake controller. It's pretty straightforward. It just has, I don't know, an accelerometer or something in there and it senses, let's see, how does it work? So the, the red wire here is attached to the brake pedal switch. So when you push the brake pedal, this box here knows that you've you got your foot on the brake pedal. And then there's an accelerometer inside that can tell how hard the vehicle is braking and that controls how much amperage it sends out to the electromagnet on the trailer. It also has a manual override here, so you can manually apply the brakes if you want to. And then there's an adjustment here. You can adjust how much gain it has, so how much current it puts out versus how hard you push the pedal. Now in the old days, before we had solid state, you know, ones and zeros, these things would have a pendulum inside, and the pendulum would swing forward as you're as you applied the brake pedal, and then that would control how much current went out to the trailer. And you had to, when you installed the brake controller, unless it was perfectly level, you had a little lever on the side and you had to adjust it so that it was straight up and down. And that would adjust the pendulum so that it would work correctly in any orientation. But these solid state ones, doesn't matter. You put them, you put them however you want to. So yeah, that's how we do it here. I don't know why other countries don't don't use the system it's pretty it works pretty well so, nothing ruins a good time like people huh Clemen? all right folks. i want that t-shirt you need to make that <laughs> i know
This is Captain Kleeman. He has a YouTube channel called Captain Kleeman. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the Captain Kleeman YouTube channel? It's um, it's a homesteading channel. Uh, run what you brung mentality. We don't have a lot of equipment. We try to get it done. And then we work for Dirt Perfect part-time. What would you say makes your homesteading channel different from all the other homesteading channels? So, Just the run what you brung part yeah, of it? Yeah, I'd say so. I think so, yeah. too. Nothing fancy about it. But it seems quite effective. Yeah. So he's got a cool project going on. Well, a couple of cool projects going on. You've got the YouTube yacht. YouTube yacht. Which is a steamboat themed, not yep. shaped. I keep calling it shaped, and that's not right. Steamboat themed ca rental cabin. Yep. With ICF poured walls. Yep. And now you guys just bought a new property, and you've got an abandoned home site, and yep. you're building a bridge. A timber bridge. A timber yeah, bridge. It's my first timber project. It's it's something. It's a bold undertaking for my first project. <laughs> I think it's going to come out pretty good. I'll put a I'll put a link in the description to where you can find those videos. That's that's been my, probably my favorite project. The log arch was interesting as well. Well, you made from the old Jeep chassis. Just learning how to weld in the process, but it works well. Right. I, I think I appreciate that part about it. You know, you like here's a project that I need to do to build this log arch, which I've never done before. Oh, and I also need to learn how to weld, which I've never done before. <laughs> well, let's just do it. Let's just bite off more than we can chew. Well, let's just do it. <laughs> I don't see any mice, buddy. I think it's fine. All right, like I said, in the old days, installing a brake controller was a... It was not a fun job. You had to tear open the wiring harness and tap into the wires and... I mean, it was a whole day affair, but on these newer trucks, newer, this is a 95, they made it pretty easy. So up underneath here, there's a brake pedal, some harnesses, and then right here, that little guy right there is a plug. All you got to do is just plug your pre-made harness into that plug and away you go. It has fused power, it has the brake pedal switch input, it has a ground, and it has a wire that runs out to the back for the brakes. Well that's it for the installation. I think the LED light might be burned out in this thing. It appears to be working. So I've got the brake pedal pressed down. There's the wiring tied up. And if we go to the back, I'm Hooked onto the dark blue wire. If I touch a test light to ground, come on. We have something. Let's go see if it the light comes on. Maybe it has to have a load. Yes, that's the deal. So the brake controller knows when the trailer is hooked up. It senses the resistance in that circuit. So I think it's working. We've got all the wiring we need. We just need to connect connect A to B and we should be you done. Are, I'm Neil. Neil. My channel is an eclectic mix of <laughs> of digging. Yep. So I have a backhoe and tractors that dig and driving mm -hmm. because I have garden tractors and compact utility tractors and a dump truck so I do a lot of driving. I've also had a couple videos about my Jeep mm -hmm. and my motor home. And then DIY is self-explanatory I do a lot of projects on my own so that's why you call your channel dig drive DIY yeah because I couldn't <laughs> just choose one thing I think that's fantastic what uh, what would you say like differentiates your channel from other channels um, probably the amount of editing I do that's definitely the case okay Neil has probably the the coolest editing that I've I have seen on YouTube well, outside of yours, I think. <laughs> now nah, he's on another level. He's got some drone footage that he he does. That's oh, it's thanks. pretty epic. Well, I try to. I spend way too much time editing, but that's that's to me is what the the creative part of it is. You know, we all film and do things like that, but to build a good story and a good presentation, I think it takes some some good editing. So that's why I spend a lot of time. With it, but. Yeah, I definitely agree. All right, folks, check out. Neil, Dig Drive DIY. I'll yeah. put a link in the description. And uh, thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Wes. Appreciate it. All right, time for the most challenging part of this job.
in order to complete the circuit, we are going to have to connect the blue wire to the blue wire. Seems counterintuitive, I know, but trust me. I think it's going to work. That'll do. Get out the heat gun. believe that's it, folks. A little bit of tape and we'll be done. I remember I redid the wiring for this four pin connector here last time we worked on this truck. That's your marker lights, turn signals, ground, all that jazz. So that part of it should be fine. We just had to add the brakes. Well, we should be done done. Got a new battery. Airbox is reinstalled. Of course, we replaced the glow plug relay. And that seems to be working, so... Kind of a dumb video, I guess. I don't know if I'll even post it. I guess on the odd chance that I do. Thanks everybody for watching. And I'll see you back here next time.